All right. Good morning. Where, where, where's everybody? Where's everybody? Oh, wait, 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 wait. What? Well, there you go. <laughs> Ooh -hoo. All right. Can you guys hear? Sounds is good. Okay. All right. Good morning. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired today. Oh my God. This is going to be terrible. I went to bed really late. I was not a good boy last night. <laughs> I went to bed late. I woke up super early. I am not going to be the brightest person today. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, Reynaldo, Hari Prasad, how you doing? Andres, Andre, Kartik, Sujay, uh, Parastorm, Chandra, Rafael. Oh, so many familiar faces here. Good morning. How is everybody doing? Uh, I, I am I'm really happy to be here. As usual. Um, uh, okay, so let me, let me, there's, there's a couple of things that I won't need to change around here. Um, but it looks like the stream is healthy. I was having internet problems before. Um, so, and I'm not sure about the sound either. So if something goes wrong, just like flood the chat with stuff so that I can see that something is just not working. Okay. Okay, um, how are we doing today? Um, if people in the chat can say hi, where are the from? I, I know a lot of you already, uh, and I've seen a lot of you in the in the Discord channel. Oh, let me please let me paste uh, let me paste an invite. Oh, what is the Discord? Um, yeah, here. Let me paste an invite. I think this invites expire. So I'm just going to post another one um, in the chat in case you guys haven't joined the Discord. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people introducing themselves. I see some conversation happening uh, and some topic suggestions. I'm very happy about that. Um, we may need, we may want to do. Do you think making a channel that is just for the live stream? You think that would be useful? Because like, so that we can be chatting live while the stream is happening and I can see suggestions. Because the chat at the Discord is a bit nicer than the chat here on YouTube. So you guys can post images, screenshots, um, things. Maybe that could be nice. I'm just not sure about like, just because I have like 17 different things open right now here. So I don't know. <laughs> it would be just like too much stuff going on and I wouldn't know where to look. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Just food for thought. Okay. So what are we doing today? Well, um, so, well, first of all, uh, as a reminder, oh, now, wait, wait, wait. Now, did I share with this with you guys? We now have a dedicated named uh, YouTube channel. So, um, so, um, uh, so now the, the parametric cam channel is not this like really long and disgusting link. It's this thing here is youtube.com slash parametric camp. How nice is that? Huh? <laughs> so, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, um, you're more than welcome to to go over and click and subscribe and all those things, uh, because today we're going to be doing two streams. Um, we are streaming from my personal channel here in the morning at 10 p.m., 10 a.m. my time, Boston time. And then we will be streaming in the Parametric Cam channel in the afternoon at 2 p.m. my time, Boston time. Oh, I see a lot of people popping up in the in the Discord. Um, so, I, and people subscribing. Yeah, Reinaldo, I think I just saw you there. You just you just joined the Discord, huh? <laughs> uh, okay. Ah. What is this, Jaime? What is this? What is this no bullshit guides to math and linear algebra? Is that a book? Is that good? Um, is that a, 
Is that a YouTube playlist? What is that? I would, I would want to check that out. Maybe it's interesting for us and maybe it's interesting for my teaching in school. Um, I don't know. And um, so, yeah, so two streams this morning and then in the afternoon at 2 p.m. Um, um, and what are we doing today? In the morning, I'm going to continue with the algorithmic modeling challenge that we did last week where we were modeling the Le, Le Umbracle. So this is a Calatrava building that's a canopy in Valencia in Spain. We did it last week, we did it in plain vanilla grasshopper. So it's my hope to, to do like a second part of that video today where I model this the exact same thing, but we do it purely in C sharp scripting within grasshopper. So, so that we learn again, I like doing these things where we model something in grasshopper and we just model the same thing using C sharp because like the geometry logics are the same, but the techniques are very different sometimes. And I think that translation is really good for folks who are trying to improve their skills and who are trying to like move from, from visual programming languages to uh, geometry computation manually. So I think it's a really good, it's a really good thing. Um, and in the afternoon, I was going to start with the, again, <laughs> I was going to start with the Grasshopper introduction to Grasshopper uh, series, but I'm not going to do that because I'm, I'm very tired. I don't have, I'm not in the mindset. And I don't think I'm going to do a good job. And those videos, I really, really want to nail them because um, I want them to be a good foundational source for folks. So, so I'm very open to topics. So if you guys want to go to the chat and you have ideas of like something simple, something easy that we could do this afternoon together, I would be more than happy to, to read that. And maybe we can vote or something by the end of this live stream. And then I can prepare a little bit in the during the break for uh, for this afternoon. Uh, so uh, they are books, okay. Rodolfo is suggesting uh, Raja Isas Essential Mathematics for Computational Design. That's a really really good resource. I very highly recommend it. I met Raja at a conference this year. She's a wonderful person. I'm a huge fan of her work. Uh, and she recently published two more, uh, Essential Guide to C-Sharp Scripting and Essential Guide to Data Structures or something like that. I haven't really read through those two roughly yet, but I think they're very good resources if you're interested in this ecosystem of parametric modeling, um, 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 grasshopper, all that stuff. Um, Okay, so again, and so things I wanted to remind people, yes, and as a reminder, I mean, if you're all here, it's because you know that we already moved the stream, we moved it to Saturdays, because um, I have a conf I'm going to have a conflict uh, on Fridays all summer long. But during the whole summer, we're just going to be doing these streams in the in, on Saturdays. I don't like that it overlaps with a, bit, um, a lot of others live streams that I think you guys should also check out, but I just can't do anything else. I'm sorry about that. Um, and um, okay, I would love if we can code an L system in C sharp. That's a good idea, Andres. But I actually want to do I want to I want to take my time to do that properly and to do like a series where I discuss L systems conceptually and I discuss recursion conceptually. So um, I wouldn't I would not want to do just like a one off or like a small piece on that. So I, perhaps at the expense of of <laughs> shy in a way, uh, I think I'm not I'm not going to get there today. And the same with swarm behavior. I think I think swarm behavior has a lot of interesting things to unpack. Um, and, um, um, so, 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 so I am not sure about, about doing that today, just this afternoon, just like, I think I would rather do something a bit more simple, something like 
something that is like a small geometry gem, something like that, something related to vector algebra, some small geometry piece, or like some small algorithmic modeling challenge, like a small pavilion of sorts, something that is a bit simpler. Um, also minimal surfaces, they do, they're very interesting um, to do, but we would, I would like to also explain like the math behind them and methods to approximate them, like using, like using uh, like, like particle systems and physics, for example. So I don't think I want to do that today. <laughs> am, I being, am I being a pain in the ass? <laughs> Taking recommendations and shutting them down? <laughs> oh God, it's, it's going to be a tough day today. Anyway, um, where was I? Okay, let's think about that during the during the stream and then we can we can probably have another conversation gift wrap mm. Harry Prasad that's a good one mm -hmm. we could gift wrap could we do that today mm. gift wrap that sounds interesting an attractor algorithm in Revit, new grasshopper, work in progress, work in progress, or, uh, hmm, I don't know. Let me think about that. I'll think about that. So, two, two, two. Okay, so should we get going? Am I recording? Yeah, because I last time I did not record, and it was terrible. Sumaya Museum facade. Hmm, I actually. Have I ever mentioned I, I work, I work very closely, and I was his student um, with Andrew Witt. Andrew Witt one of, was one of the head researchers at at Gary and Partners. No, so Gary Technologies, who was the consultant for the Sumaya Museum, and he ex he, he gave us a lecture on like the whole rationalization and panelization of the facade. It was. Really, really cool. You guys have to check out his work. Andrew Witt. He's a professor at the, at, at the Harvard Graduate School of Design as well. Um, Kengo Kumas Yusuhara Bridge. I don't know that one. Let me, can I look that up? In a, can I look that up real quick? Oh, I have, I don't know. Kengo Kumas. Kengo Kuma. Bridge Yusuhara. Ooh, this is cool. Oh, that's beautiful. What a beautiful bridge. Nice. Look at that. How elegant is that? Beautiful. Oh. oh, that is so beautiful. You know, this would actually be a really good candidate for C sharp. Just because doing that kind of recursion of elements is really easy to do with a for loop as opposed to doing it in Grasshopper, for example, that requires a bit more. That could be very interesting to do. Hmm. All right, I'm going to think about that. This looks like a good candidate. Hmm. Okay, I like that. Where is this? Yusuhara, which I guess is in Japan. Where in Japan is this? I've never been to Japan. Is anybody from Japan? I've never been there. I'm dying to go. Oh, it's in an island. Mm. It's in the south. Oh, 
that's like in the mountains of the island. How cool is this? I really want to go here. <laughs> Should we organize a, a field trip? <laughs> Should we just all, uh, let's just meet in the Yusuhara Museum in Japan. And like, well, not now, but <laughs> whenever we can all travel again and stuff, you know. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Okay. It's a pretty comprehensive guide to design, to fabrication process. Parametric chem study tour. <laughs> I love that idea. Let's organize a field trip and let's just visit like cool geometry um, buildings in the world uh, and like nerd out and code together. <laughs> that sounds really cool. That sounds totally my jam. Okay. Shall we get going? Because otherwise, otherwise we're never gonna. Um, okay. So let me set this up a little bit. So if you remember last week, we made, let me, let me look that up. Let me just come up with. Uh, mm -hmm. Some images. Yeah, this, this look good. Okay, so <laughs> Rafael, that's genius. <laughs> I love that instead of uh, instead of all the architects with their moleskins just drawing sketches, we all sit down and we're like in front of the building doing grasshopper and C sharp and. Choo -choo -choo -choo. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> That would be awesome. People would be like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> Why are they here with the laptops in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> hey, Merit, good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> I, uh, I I love that idea. Let's do it. Let's organize it for, for I don't know what, for 2023? I don't know. When are we going to be able to do that anyway? <laughs> okay. All right, you guys are distracting me. I can't, I can't, I can't start a serious stream like this. Ooh. Okay. Um, let me set up my mind a little bit. So we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do it in 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 C sharp scripting, which means I probably want to start the video. I will do the introduction at the very end, but I probably want to start the the video by. Um, by showing the definition that we did for last year. And I'm going to use watch tech. I, I saw you here, watch tech. Yes, you're here. Yeah. Good morning. So watch tech has been helping me a lot along with other folks. They've been helping me to take the files that I code while in the stream. And then they take those files and they clean them up and they group things and they add comments and they make it more readable. And that's the file that we publish on the GitHub repo for, for those of you who look at the who look at the files later? So can we give can we give Gotch, Watch Tech uh, like a like a clap and applause for 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 his help in the channel? It's very kind of him um, and of the other folks that have been helping. I see Hadi Prasad; he's also been helping a lot on that front. Um, so I'm giving you guys an applause from here. Um, okay, yes. So. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to show the file and then I'm going to say, well, let's replicate this in, in C sharp. And I'm going to explain, I probably want to show a little bit of the diagrams and how we did this in Grasshopper and explain how we're going to change this. Um, nice. <laughs> Lots of clapping. Awesome. Um, and, um, and then I guess we can just get started, I, I guess. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we probably want to start here. Um, and I don't need to explain how we did this again. People, people should probably just go to the previous video and check it out, right? 
Hmm. Okay. Okay. I am not ready for this today. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's get started. Before we start, I would like to I would like to recap on what we did in the last video. So if you remember, what we did was we implemented with Vanilla Grasshopper um, the structure of the of the building, and we started off the file that you can see here is not exactly the one that I had from the last video. This is the one that is already been cleaned up and grouped and it's a bit more legible. Um, and uh, here we started with a bunch of parameters. So the width, the height, the dimensions, uh, like a lot of other uh, smaller dimensions that correspond to um, a breakdown of the process that we were going to follow. So what is what, what dimensions are affecting the shape of each one of the parts of the building. So if you want to learn more about what each one of these parameters and each one of these um, of this information that we're going to be using for the model, please feel free to go back to the previous video. Um, because in this one, we're going to start right away, we're going to start implementing the process in a C sharp with a C sharp scripting component and using uh, Rhino common. Um, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to place a C sharp script component here. And I'm going to start changing all the inputs so that we mirror um, what we have here in the in the um, in the parameters. So I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to do this manually. So if you want to fast forward, or so I'm just going to do. I'm just going to be like, this is going to be the width. This is going to be the height, and then I'm going to start adding more parameters here. Like a lot of them. This is going to be a big component. So this is going to be D, this is going to be H1, this is going to be H2, this is going to be the offset, offset, this is going to be the number of ribs. And remember that here you cannot, in the input parameters, you shouldn't be using, um, you shouldn't be using white spaces. And that is also in C sharp is a convention that variables start with the variables are named in camel casing. So first letter is always lowercase and then any consecutive word is uppercase. But here in the inside of the grasshopper world, things change a little bit because like, we usually use like one letter denominations for variables for input variables, which is not great practice. In general, when you're writing real production, C sharp programs, but uh, whatever. So for example, here, lowercase w and uppercase w in a program in a real program could lead to a lot of confusion. It's not great practice. But we're just going to do that for the sake of mirroring what we did in the previous video. Um, so md2 uh, m w. And if you need to refresh yourself about what these parameters were, feel free to check the previous the previous video that is probably linked somewhere here in the description, etc, etc. Okay, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to start setting what kind of values, what kind of types are each one of these. So, um, so for example, uh, so for example, w is going to be a double, they're mostly going to be doubles. So uh, d is also going to be a double. They're all going to be doubles except for, for example, the number of ribs. And so number of ribs is going to be an integer because we don't have decimal part. Number of spans is also going to be an integer. And then the rest, all of these are going to be are going to be doubles. So here, 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 double, MD1, double, MD2, double, MW is double and pipe radius is double. And if we double click here, we can see that we have a really large uh, double, 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 all the parameters are now the inputs for the function. And I can see that all of them are doubles exactly. And I have one output, which is a but I forget exactly what I did. So I'm just going to start adding outputs as we start programming 
<clears throat> this component. Okay. So, okay. So now that we have our platform, we have our C sharp script component. I think we are ready. I'm just going to plug everything in. No? Um, I'm going to start plugging everything in here. Number of ribs, number of spans, uh, dimensions D1 and D2. Now MD1 and MD2. The width and the radius of the pipes. Okay. And I think we're ready to go here. So I'm just going to turn off the rest of what I had here. And I'm going to start working. Oh, I need the, sorry, the base point. Ah, I forgot about that. Yes. So base point, and this is going to be this one. And if you remember, this has to be of the type point 3D. Okay. So I think we're ready to start. Um, so let's get to this. Okay. Let me save this file somewhere. Oh, what are we? Let me save this file somewhere so that I don't lose it. Okay, part two. And then what are we going to do? Can I go get some water? My throat is a little dry. I'll be right back. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back here. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, look at the the transparency effect. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah, the battery on my microphone is not going to work well. So um, if I stop having sound, just please let me know just post real a lot on the on the chat, please. Okay, where were we? Where we? Okay. I wanna. So, do I wanna keep everything here? It's gonna get messy. I'm just gonna move things to the back. I'm just gonna move things to the back so that I can keep at least sound a clear view here okay and what was the first thing that we did i totally forgot what we did last week so the first thing was we created the arch right and then we replicated the arch on the side and then and then what did we do and then we created the arch in the middle and then we subdivided everything. We created the lines, so the ribs, and um, we created the ribs. And um, what else did we do? It would be super nice if instead of just outputting a list of everything, we outputted data trees so that at each module it's on its own data tree. So we have a branch per, we have one branch per, um, per element or per family of elements. So for example, we have a branch, we have a data tree that has like each one of the, um, each one of the main arches. We have a data tree that has each one of the middle arches in the center 
we have a data tree that has these ribs, these ribs. That would be really cool, actually. Is, is this going to be an overkill for this? Um, well, I mean, if we're doing, I guess if we're doing C-sharp, that's kind of what we want to do. We want to be nice and clean, right? Hmm. Maybe we can just do... We can do it without data trees and then change that. Or... But if we do that, then it's going to make us rewrite a lot of the code. So I think it's just easier to start with data trees right away. I think it's just easier to start with data trees right away because otherwise, otherwise it's going to require a lot of rewriting. So that's actually not a bad idea. I think we should do that. And each branch, it's a module. It's like a, it's like a span. I like that idea. It's, it feels very clean, very organized. Mm, okay. So I guess that's what we're doing. Well, but then if each branch is a span, so if each branch has like all the, I can see that very easily for the arch in the middle and for the ribs, but then what happens with the arches on the sides? Do we duplicate them? That doesn't, that doesn't sound very clean to me. Well, maybe the arches, maybe the arches on the sides, they just follow like a different pattern. They just follow a different pattern because if we have five spans, we're going to have six arches. So those are just the ones that are like, they, there's an offset with them. Yeah, I guess that's what, that's what, because if we have one, if we ended up, if, if we made just one span, so we would have a data tree with one branch, which is all the stuff in the inside of the span. And the, but then we have another data tree with two branches one for each arch yeah so that's that's fine that's i guess that's what it is it is it is what it is that's what we have you know um but definitely that's a, that's much cleaner than doing it with uh just like just outputting everything flat without any structure i don't like that huh okay so we're doing yes we're doing data trees guys are you ready for that <laughs> it's gonna happen <laughs> So we're going to learn something today, if you're not familiar with data trace. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Which means I probably want to start doing all the arches and outputting them as a data tree. And then we get that off the table so that we know, so that we know how to do that. And then the, so I spend a bit more time explaining that first like the data tree logic and then we can just keep going with the rest of the geometry without talking too much about that <laughs> dude rafael you're on fire today man <laughs> that's very funny too um <laughs> uh I'm going to, I'm going to, if you come to this core, I'm going to, I'm going to create a role for you. That's going to be the, the, the camp entertainment entertainer, <laughs> the fun, uh, the fan manager or something like that. <laughs> okay. Where I, where was I? I don't know. I, I keep, yeah, it's, it's, I'm going to, I don't, I don't know how you guys deal with me with my ranting and my back and forth. It's going to be terrible today. I can let you, I, I let you, I'm letting you guys know. I may actually have to do a little bit of caffeine. So to, to just set me, set me, set me straight. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So where was I? Ah, uh, yeah. So we were going to do, we were going to go here. Nope. Here. No, he, yes, here. <laughs> and 
we were going to start with uh, can I move I want to move this point somewhere I don't I don't like it when it's in the center uh, yes I don't like it that it's yeah, yeah, bah, bah, yeah, bah, bah. <clears throat> yeah so I like it so that we can move it around and uh, mm -mm. You see, this is very laggy because it's still calculating everything on on the on this end. Let me turn these components off. No, these ones. These are the ones that are a little heavier. Let me turn this off. Um, and um, that's probably going to make things a bit more lightweight. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but display components are very heavy in Grasshopper just because they have to take the, all the nurse geometry and turn it into meshes so that they can be rendered by the graphics processor. So when you have a lot of nurse geometry, it just takes a while. Um, um, before I forget, I was planning to give a workshop for McNeil on art. Are you guys cheating on me with Long? Because that's fine. Because <laughs> he's really good. I. Uh, and we we all we can all learn a lot from him. Um, you reckon he, we could dive a bit into our trees? What do you mean by our trees? Uh, recursive trees? What is it? What is it that you mean by our trees? Uh, if you want, if you can, if you can write more a little bit more about that. Okay. So where was I? Yeah, data trees. Data trees in Grasshopper. Okay. Um, mm -mm. Uh, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the arts and then we're going to put that we're going to replicate them we're going to okay we're going to do that we're going to create the arch we're going to add them we're going to replicate them we're going to put in a list and then we're going to spit out the list and then I'm going to explain the problem of like this is not clean blah 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 we want to like break this into spans and then I will rewrite that and make it a data tree okay Okay, so, um, okay, yeah. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do um, is just like we did in the previous video, the first thing we're gonna start is by, we're gonna start by taking the base point, which is somewhere there, and we're going to create the three points in the top and, uh, and here, this one and the other one top, we're going to create the arch and then we're going to replicate it however many spans we have in the definition and then we're going to pack all of that into a list and we're going to spit it out from from the components so that is going to be here so I'm going to double click here and I'm going to start by taking the base point here uh, and creating like we have in the diagram creating two other points and then creating an, an interpolated curve through them. So we're going to do that here by saying, um, and I'm going to add a lot of comments because it's going to be a long code, so we want to keep things tidy. Create the first arch. And I'm going to do this a lot. I think I'm going to write very long names because it's going to get messy. Um, and, um, and we're going to say this is going to be base point is going to be the same point. How are we going to do this? I'm going to get a new point. I'm going to get a new point 3D, which is going to be equal to the coordinates of base point X in the X direction. That's the same coordinate in the Y direction is going to be Y plus half the width of the span. So, so that's going to be base point Y plus the half of the span, so 0 0.5 times the width of the arch. And then um, on top is going to be the Z of the base point plus capital H. So that's going to be base point Z plus capital H. Okay. And then similarly, I'm going to create the other point, the one that's the other base of the point. Um, and I'm going to do something similar. Be careful with copy pasting. I keep saying this all the time. I should not be doing it myself. Arch top point. Art, uh, arch base 
base two point, for example. These are terrible names I'm coming up with. So this is going to be full width, and this is going to be the exact same height. Okay. So now that we have the two points, let's create an interpolated curve that is going to go through them. So I'm going to look at create in create interpolated curve uh, inter um, in in create interpolated curve exactly and I'm going to look at what is it going to take it's going to take a list of points and the degree and it's also may also going to take the the not styles we I don't think we need any of that so we can just um, we can just um, we can just do a list of points and the degree and because it needs a list of points so maybe it's actually better if instead of having individual variables for each one of the points, what we do is we actually create a list of points. So I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to say I'm going to create a list of points through this that is going to be that is going to be um, arch points. And I'm going to start this new as an empty list. As an empty li list of point 3D objects. Okay. Now the first one that I'm going to add is the one in the base. So arch points Let's add the one on the base point. That is the one that was coming from the outside. And then these guys, instead of declaring them as variables and giving them names and stuff, we can just create them on the fly and add them directly to our list. So look at what I'm doing here. I am replacing the variables by just saying I'm going to add a new point that is going to be the one on the top. And I'm going to add another new point that is going to be the one on the other end. I'm missing parentheses here at the end. And also keep in mind that in this case, because we need the points to be ordered for the curve, it's very important that um, that we create these points and we add them to the list in the order that we want the curve to follow them. Okay. So here now that we have a and we can create a interpolated curve out of a list of points. So that's going to be the arch points. And the degree is going to be three, which is a normal, it's a very common degree uh, for a for an for a for a nerves curve. But we have to remember to curve um, art curve is going to be equal to this thing. We have to remember to store the result of this operation somewhere. Okay. Um, just for the sake of seeing if we're doing okay, let me output this by the from this component here. Um, it looks like we're executing this, there's no error. Um, it's really good practice when you're doing C sharp scrutiny in Grasshopper to plug a panel to the out so that we know if things are going well. And here to the A component, you can see that I have a planar curve. I'm going to plug in a geometry box so that we can see it render in the viewport. And I can see that this looks good to me. And if I lower this down, uh, I have and and this goes up and down. So things are looking good on this end. Okay, so we have the first arch. So now let's take this and let's replicate it then a number of spans. And I need to take a look at how to do that because this is not going to be as as in grasshopper but because of the logic of C sharp scripting, I'm going to need to clone them and move them, I think. So let me take a look at that. Um, is there a way to stop Grasshopper from auto completing? I know, I know it drives me mad as well, but I don't think, I don't think, I think that the C sharp scripting IDE is just, it's just what it is. Um, it's still, it's still a work in progress or it's part of like the development. I don't know, but it's, yeah, it's pretty annoying. Uh, so what I do, what I basically do is I just type list, I open and close uh, angle brackets, I open and close parentheses to avoid all the autocomplete. And then I go in and I type the type. That's that's my that's my work around uh, that uh, around that problem. So I'm going to take a look at this because if you remember, uh, I may want to explain this in the video, if you remember to copy the curve in in here in in vanilla grasshopper, what we did was we just moved it with a bunch of different vectors, which implicitly created copies. Um, but in C sharp, we're not going to be able to do that. Because if we move an arch, we're actually moving the arch, we're not creating a copy that is 
displaced from the original one. So we actually have to, I believe we may, we'll have to clone the curve a bunch of times and then each one of them move them. Um, so let me try that first and then we get into the video. Um, so can I, can I clone? Can I clone or copy? Ensure private copy, duplicate. Can I duplicate? Construct an exact duplicate of this curve. That sounds good to me. Duplicate curve. Yeah, that sounds good to me. So let me try just to duplicate this. Duplicate. One, be one belongs to geometry base. The other one belongs to the curve. So I'm going to use this just because it's going to give me already the same type. So I won't have to cast it. Um, and then let's say I move this translate, like, uh, for example, in the y direction, I'm going to translate it like, I don't know, uh, one unit. So zero, one, zero. And uh, I'm going to add another output here, which is going to be and it's going to be the clone. So let me see that. Yeah, well, I did. Yeah, it's in the X, but yes, it's, it's working. Okay, so mm -hmm. So I guess we're going to take, I guess what we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop. And in each, in each for loop, we're going to clone the curve, we're going to move it, and then we're going to add it to the list. Mm hmm. Okay, so let me undo this. Okay, and I'm going to undo this. <clears throat> and then I'm going to I'm going to do that. Oh, the battery is not not looking good. Um something is wrong with my YouTube streaming today. And it just tells me that I have zero concurrent viewers. Is anybody there? <laughs> are you guys there? Because it just keep, it's just not updating how many concurrent viewers are in the in the thing. Uh, so if you're alive, and you can say hi. <laughs> that would be good because it makes me feel lonely, you know? Okay. So where was I? Yes, we were going to now create a list of um, Yeah, I want to explain that the concept here is a little different than 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 uh, in regular. Thank you, Rafael. Than in regular vanilla grasshopper. Okay. Oh, pixel car, Luigi. How are you guys doing? I don't, I didn't know you were here. Uh, okay. <clears throat> The next step that we're going to follow is we're going to take this arch and we're going to create copies. We're going to create uh, as many as spans we have in this definition. The thing is, is that the process that we're going to follow is a little bit different because when we did it in vanilla grasshopper, the only thing that we did was we moved the original arch by a series of vectors with increasing lengths so that it was like farther and farther away. And because of the nature of the visual programming environment, that implicitly created copies, copies of that original arch. However, in C sharp scripting, we can't really do that because if we take this original arch and we move it, we're actually going to be moving the whole arch. So we're not going to be able to create copies. So we need to actually explicitly make those copies and then translate them or move them. Uh, however far away we need. So let me show you how to do that. So we're going to start here. And now that we have a, a our first base arch, what we want to do is we're going to create uh, all the um, all the arches. Well, for that, we probably want to start off a we're going to start off a list. And we probably this list is going to contain curve objects here. And now what we want to do is because we want to perform this operation of like copying the curve, clone, cloning it, and then moving it as many times as spans we have. So we're going to do this. We're going to create a for loop where we say for 
however many times starting at zero and however many times so that's going to be what is it going to be in the number of ribs i think that's what we said um and let me see if this is true yes i don't get any error so however many um well, i'm going to make this a little bigger i always keep forgetting uh to make it bigger yes so um however many ribs we have what i would like to do is i would like to multiply i would like to take the i would like to create a copy of the of the of the arch so i'm going to call this clone and i'm going to say take the arch curve and create a duplicate so duplicate this curve and you can see that this takes this curve and creates an exact copy that i'm going to call clone and then it's this clone that i want to move a distance away from its original base the original arch curve that i created before how long well for each one of the arches is going to be is going to be is going to be the position of that arch so the first one the second one the third one the fourth one times the span of the distance between spans which i believe in the diagram we named d capital d so which means that um i can compute that as a value so i'm going to say distance is going to be equal to um where we are so i so the first the second the third times the capital d which is the length of each one of these spans and then we can say clone translate and we can see that translate takes either a vector or it takes x y c i want to move it in the x direction so i'm going to say can you move it an amount of distance in the x direction and then zero and zero and then once that is done i want to take that arch and add it to my list so that's going to be arches sorry i'm going to take the clone and i'm going to add it no no sorry <laughs> i'm going to take the list and i'm going to add this one element this clone that i just created okay and let me see if we can output that i'm going to do arches i'm going to output this here and you can see that now i have this all these replicated elements oh that is a lot uh, oh no sorry i did number of ribs and it's not number of ribs it's number of spans exactly number of spans okay and you're going to notice that there's something that is not correct and let me show you if we do three spans we actually don't have three spans we have here we have three arches uh, which basically means we have two spans and this is not entirely correct it's not entirely correct because it's because we always have one additional for the in the case of the arches we have one additional arch uh, extra uh, on top of the number of spans uh, i made this sound very complicated but basically we have one more arch than spans so here i can just say plus one and then now that we have three spans we have four arches so now this makes sense okay and um before I start doing anything else, I want to start being a bit cleaner about the outputs that I'm spitting out of this component. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start creating uh, explicit outputs. So here, for example, this is going to be arch curves, which will be different than the arch surfaces. And I want this one to be um, to be the one that uh, is going to is going to is going to output for example the arches so what did i call this um arch curves is going to be arches i'm going to i'm going to output that so that's going to be great and that's working already here all those planar curves and something that i personally like to do is um is is creating like one output that i use to just output geometry and like while i'm developing to see things working so i'm going to call that here I'm, i've been using a for example i'm going to call this the console just because i, I do a lot of programming and I, so i come from that world um, and the console is basically going to be this place where i'm temporarily just like outputting things so that i can see if they're working whatever and once they're done once they're good then i can output them on the right con or the right output which in this case for example was arch curves okay so this one uh, i'm going to um, i'm going to pipe it here and this one you can see that it's already coming out from the component okay so good the only thing 
that I would like to add is that you can see that because we created a list, um, all the elements, all the arches are coming out as in one flat list, so one after the other. And this is okay probably for the arches, it's probably okay for a lot of the other elements that we're going to be generating, but it may actually get messy when we get, for example, to the ribs, because then we're just basically going to, to output like a list of like hundreds of these ribs. And um, something that I would like to do for this exercise is to output a cleaner data structure, something that tells me per span, which elements do I have? So what I would like to do is I would like to turn this output, which right now is a flat list, I would like to turn it into a data tree and each one of the branches containing each one of the arches. This will be a little redundant for, um, for the arches and etc. But when we get to the ribs, it will actually be really helpful. So because I don't want to do it just for the ribs, I want the structure to be symmetrical across all the outputs. What we're going to do is for each one of the outputs, we're going to output them as data trees. And that's something that we're also going to be using just for the sake of learning. So, um, so let me, so let's get, let's get together to do that. Okay, I need a little break, sorry. Okay. All right. Oh, was the have I have we seen you before here with us? Welcome. Um, a reminder for everybody: we have the um, the new channel, Parametric Camp. Um, I'm gonna paste links here if you want to subscribe. Uh, we're gonna be streaming this afternoon from this channel, and we will be eventually moving there and stopping from this channel. We have the Discord, which you can join and. Well, remember to go into the introductions and to say who you are, where you're coming from. And we have the bonfire where we tell sto computational design stories overnight, etc. We have camp mentors, camp managers. It's, um, it's, it's, it's getting cool. It's becoming cool. All right. And I was going to transform this into a data, into a data, um, into a data tree. Okay. Cool. Now let's get to it. What I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this. Right now we were outputting a flat list. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to create a data tree of elements. And this is going to be curve elements. And I'm going to, yeah, sometimes the autocomplete, I'm going to call these arches and this is going to be a new data tree. Um, and, um, Sometimes autocomplete plays, plays games. So I'm going to just do this. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to comment, I'm going to remove the flat list. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to do the same process. Uh, so we have the data tree. We're going to create the clone curve. We're going to compute the distance. We're going to move that curve. And then before add it to the tree, in its own branch. So what we're going to do here is first, we have to design which branch this is going to be this, this particular arch is going to be in. And then once we do that, then we have to add the arch to the data tree in that particular branch. So the way that works is we can create a grasshopper path element. So that's going to be called path. And this is going to be new grasshopper path. And as you can see here, uh, the options are basically whichever path, the index, or however many indices you want to have. So for example, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to output a simple data tree that goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, the branches are 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, for each one of the arches. So I think with the index number, we're going to be fine. So we can for the index number, we can just use the value of i, so where we are in that list, the first element, the second element, the third element. And then when here, when we say arches, can you add this element? So what is the element 
Okay, if you guys can see here, you can it tells us that we what is the first parameter is which element we're going to add. So that's going to be the clone curve. And the second one is we can specify which path, which branch do we want to insert this element in. So that's going to be path here. Okay. And now if we try this out, let's look at how this changes. If I execute this, the magic here is that now instead of a flat list, we have a structured list where each branch contains one of the arches that we just generated. Again, this might feel a little redundant for what we have so far. We could have just crafted this, comp this output, but this will show its benefits once we start uh, tackling the most complicated um, um, the most complicated elements, which are going to be the, um, the, um, the um, I'm going to call it the, the ribs. Okay, so all right. Awesome. Uh, what is the next thing we're going to do? We're going to create the arches, the elevated arches that are here in the middle. Okay, let's get to that. Uh, what do you mean? I hear you guys saying, not live, I pause a lot. What does that mean? Not live either. I'm not sure what you guys mean. That you can't follow? Uh, that I, Or that I'm pausing too much. I just, I'm really, I'm not having a clear day today. So I need to like, take my time before. And when you, if you, if you guys see the edited videos, the edited videos are much nicer because like, everything is like cut and paste in place. And there's no like, <laughs> how do I do that? You know? Um, okay, so where are we going to do that? So here, uh, let me remind myself of the values. So H, we had H1, that was the how high it was. H2 was how high it was according to the, the base height. Okay. Um, all right. Sounds good. Hmm. <laughs> Just a quick refresher. Remember that uh, the parameters that we chose to name this were H1 was going to be how high was the starting point of the middle arch from the ground plane. And then H2 was going to be how elevated was the top of the arch from the base main height. So basically the height of this point of the elevated would be capital H plus H2. Okay, so that's the logic we're going to follow here. So, so very similar. Let's do just like we did before. I'm going to create here, create middle, middle arches. So the first I'm going to the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create one base arch, and then I'm going to clone it like we did for for the for the ones in the um, for the base arches. So I'm going to create a list of point 3d objects with Ah. <laughs> list of points of the arches, I'm going to call middle arch points. And this is going to be a new list of point 3d objects. And I'm going to copy paste this here. And then um, for that one, I'm going to say, I'm going to add here, I'm going to create a new point 3d. And let's break this down the x coordinate is going to be the same x coordinate as the base point plus uh, half d. Okay, so um, this is going to be base point x plus 0 0.5 times d. Okay, now this the y is going to be whatever base point has for no y is going to be the same as yeah, sorry, in this direction, y is going to be the same as base point. So what I'm going to do is base point dot y. And then the c coordinate of this point is going to be whatever the c coordinate of the base point was plus h1. So that's going to be the, here is going to be base point, base point z plus h1, which is a parameter that's coming in from, um, from the component. Okay, so that's the first point. 
the second point, I'm going to do some copy pasting here. Remember, copy pasting is super dangerous. So I'm going to fill in here manually so that I know that everything is correct. Um, so what is going to be the x coordinate? The x coordinate is going to be like we had before. It's going to be equal to whatever base point is. Um, no, it's going to be the x coordinate is going to be the same as the point that we just did. So that's going to be uh, base point x plus half d. Okay, that's one thing. Now the y coordinate. What is the y coordinate going to be? Y coordinate is going to be equal to the coordinate of base point plus halfway through the width of the arch. So that's going to be base point dot y plus 0 0.5 times the width of the arch. And then z, which is the tricky one, is going to be equal to whatever base point has for a height plus the height of the arch, so capital H, plus the additional height, which is H2. So as we do that, um, it's going to be base point, base point, three, base point dot Z plus H plus H2. Ah, whoa, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, H2. I think we're good. Um, when lines get too long, sometimes it's, uh, it's common practice to break them down like this. And uh, so this is a common thing. This make things, makes code a bit more readable. So maybe we want to do this for all of them. And then the third point is going to be the point on the other end. So this one, uh, we can probably do, I can probably do a little bit of copy pasting here and filling in the blanks. So here I'm going to say base point x is going to be equal. What is x going to be? x is going to be equal to the x coordinate is going to be the same as the other all the other points. So that's going to be this that's going to remain the same. y is going to be equal to whatever the base plus the full width of the arch. And then base point z is going to be equal to uh, the z of this point is going to be equal to the base point plus h1. So the same as the initial point. Okay. Um, and then now let's see if we can create curve, this is going to be arch middle curve. And then I'm going to create an interpolated curve through the middle arch points. And I'm going to spit out in the console. Remember the console is just this, um, this fake output that we're using just for debugging and for development. We're going to output this, not the middle arch points. You see, this is arch middle curve. And as we do this, I'm going to run this. And you can see that I have here, I have the arch, and it looks like if I have a view from the right, these are aligned, these are aligned. If H0 is zero, then there's no over anything here. If this is zero, then the points are also on the ground. So I think that makes sense. And I think this looks good to me. Okay, so let's keep working on this. So now we have the middle arches. And what we want to do is we want to do the same thing we just did before we want to create a data tree. And we want to add for each one of these spans, we want to create a clone, we want to translate that clone, and we want to add it to the branch, I'm going to write this manually, data tree. Uh, well, maybe not so manually, I'm going to copy paste a little bit data tree. Uh, middle arches is going to be blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to create a new for loop, what I'm saying, this is going to be equal to zero, I is going to be less than the number of spans. And this is just going to be the number of spans because we have the same amount of middle arches as the same amount of spans. So here we're good, I plus plus. And then um, and then as we do that, um, as we do that, then we're going to say I'm going to clone the curve, that's going to be middle arch, arch middle curve, uh, duplicate, duplicate curve. Okay. And then I'm going to calculate the distance, lower uh, distance is going to be I times D capital D. 
and then I'm going to take the clone and translate it that distance in the x direction. So that's going to be distance zero and zero. And now we're going to add it to the path. So we're basically going to copy and paste here, we're going to create a new path with the index value of where which one of the curves we are in. And then we're going to take we to the middle arches, we're going to add that clone that we just generated in that path. Okay, as we run this, as we run this, nothing happens really, because we don't have an output. So, so I'm going to say, middle arch curves, I'm going to create a new outcome, a new output here. Uh, and I'm going to rename this a little bit, I'm going to say base arch curves. As I do that, if I run this, things are going to crash probably. So I think I want to reopen everything here. And now say here we have, we just renamed this base arch curves. And then here we want middle arch curves is going to be this variable that we just created here, middle arches. And let's see if that works. Um, it looks like we have something here. And I'm going to plug a component to see. And I see that I have a nice data tree structure with first element, second element, third element. Um, and they're showing up here, h2 is terribly large. So I'm going to lower that down a little bit. And um, it looks like it's working. So nice. So I think we're done with the base arches, I think we're ready to move on to creating the ribs. Okay, this is going to be super interesting. Ooh. All right. You guys still there? Still zero people. <laughs> Concurrent viewers. Mm hmm. Well, okay. So the ribs. How did we do this before we created a we found? I remember we we did this like shattering thing. But uh, that was not great. And we found that there was like a curve subdivide. Um, mm -mm -mm. Maybe that's going to be more helpful here for us today. Uh, sub curve, exactly sub curve, Chris, sub curve, can we do sub curve in Rhino common? Is there such a thing? Let me look that up. Rhino common sub curve curve class get length. Um, let's see if there is something. So let's look at the curve class here. And let's see what we can find that could be useful for us. So it has the degree dimension that gets the domain. So we're going to need this to figure out uh, the domain of the curve. Um, change dimension, close curve, close point, closest points, component, construct object, contains, create blend curve, blend, create boolean, all of these are static methods, create fillet, interpolate the curve, means, outline, twin curves, curvature, divide by contour, divide by length, divide by count, divide equidistance, Calculates 3D points on a curve where the linear distance between the points is equal. Mm, I don't think that that works. Extend interval where possible analytical extent of the curve to include the given domain. This will not work on closed curve. The linear curve will be identical to the rest to the restriction. Can we do this with a smaller domain? Where possible, analytically extends curve to include the given domain. This will not work. The original curve will be identical to the restriction of the resulting curve to the original curve domain. Uh, um, maybe we can try this one because it's called extend, but extend of may also mean that we can reduce if the domain is smaller than 
then what maybe we can give it a try real quick here so okay so in the console let me output the arch middle curve let me turn everything off so we have the arch middle curve okay and um, let me print on the on the out let me print arch middle curve dot domain to string let me print that so here the curve has a domain from zero to two okay so what that means is what if i take arch middle okay arch middle curve dot extend and here where possibly analytical sense occur to include the given domain this will not work the start of the extension if the start is not inside the domain of this curve an attempt will be made to ah so we can use this so let's say i reduce this to 0 0.5 and 1.75 for example and i guess extend returns a copy of that curve now it returns Yeah, the curve on success, no on failure. So I'm going to say curve reduced is going to be equal to, and this I'm going to just do 0 0.1 and like something very large so that we can see how it's asymmetrical and then reduced. Uh -huh, and it's not working. Why is it not working? Um, do I have anything in here? Null. Okay, so that did not work. So what if the domain is a little larger? Can it only extend? Is that what it is? Planar curve? And it's a bigger? <laughs> so it can, we cannot do smaller? Ah, that's a bummer. So this is zero. So you see the beginning is where it should be. And what if this is 0 0.1? Oh, it's, it is reducing 0 0.5. No, it's not really reducing, no? So what is the domain of this curve? 0 to 3. So it's not really reducing that. Hmm, that's a bummer. Yes, so if we use that to reduce, it doesn't work. Huh? So I guess we can use this. Rafael, you're right. Um, data, trees have, I, data trees have to be of the exact same type. They cannot have multiple types inside. Um, unless, for example, the you're using geometry base. So uh, if your data tree is of geometry base, then it can have different types. But then it's a bit more complicated to handle those those elements. So, um, so yeah. But let me let me let me rephrase that. That all the elements of the you can use geometry base, and then all the elements of the data tree have to be children of the geometry base class, which means, for example, points, vectors, um, curves, etc. But then when you use them in your code, you can only use the methods and the properties of the geometry base class. If you want to use all the additional functionality of a curve or a point, you have to each one of them check if they are curves, points, whatever, and then you have to cast them into that original type before you can access those properties. Okay, so extend doesn't work. So let's go back and do some research. Extend by surface parameter, fair. First, a curve object. Nope. No frame out, got bounding more conic section, curve parameters, get fillet points, get length. You guys have any ideas? How can we take a curve and um, get a sub curve out of it? Has nerve firms, is closable, is continuous. Is ellipse is linear, is short, is all joint curve, length parameter, make close, local closest point, normalize length parameter, 
offset, perpendicular, planar, close. Project to mesh, project to plan, rebuild, remove short segments. Simplify, split. Ah, okay. Okay, so uh, this is really easy. So we can split the curve at the domain parameters. Yep. Yeah, Rodolfo, that's what we're looking at. We're trying to figure out how to do sub curve. Um, but in, in native Rhino common, I think it's going to be with split. That's what I add. That's super easy. So for example, yeah. So let's say we take, what were we doing? Um, curve, reduce, and then we take middle arches, and then we split. Oh no, sorry. Arch, middle, curve dot split. And then here we need to pass either uh, T or a bunch of T's, BRF cutter, data, surface cutter, no. So you can see that if we pass one parameter, it's going to give us an array of curves. So it's going to be, give us the two curves or the three curves. If we pass uh, a list of new list of double objects, and then we initialize this to, for example, 0 0.5 and 1.5. And this is going to be an array. OK, and we're going to output this to the console. Reduce. <clears throat> uh, if we do this, does this work? Yes. And you see how we have three curves. One that goes from 0 to 0 0.5, another one from 0 to 0 0.5. So if we bake this, this is actually three curves. So you can see how I can take this chunk and move it, you know, or I can take this chunk here, you know, and then this other chunk here. You see the three segments that I have split the curve in. So now it's just about saying, well, instead of outputting the full list of splits, I just want to output the one in the middle, right? So now I just get the one in the middle. So that's probably why, how we want to split. Um, I think that's where we want to. Mm -hmm. Can we do curve to curve intersection? We can do that. Um, but in this case, it's not going to be worth it. What we're going to do is we're going to chop the, um, we're going to chop the curve by, we're going to chop the curve by a plane. We're going to find the two points at the intersection, and then we're going to use the parameter of those points. Um, and then those are going to be OK. All right. OK, let's do let's do the let's do it. So how are we going to do this so that it's clear? How are we going to do this so that it's a bit clearer? Oh, let me save this before I, okay. Mm -hmm. How are we going to do this? We're going to do it. I'm going to exp shall we do the subdivision first? And we're going to we're going to explain the subdivision first, splitting the curve. And then we're going to do the plane cutting because we're going to say, Oh, we need the parameters, but we don't know which those parameters are. So we need to find them through the intersection with the plane. And then we use those as I think that's a better way to explain it. It's going to be easier to understand. 
than if we just start with the plane, we start with the cutting, and then we split the curve into that. So this is something I like doing a lot. I like like doing the simpler version and then backtracking to create in the more complicated. Sometimes the most complicated part is preparing the data that you need for an operation, which like here. Um, so so let's do that. <clears throat> and we're going to start here. If you remember from the previous video, the way we did the rips was by defining this variable called offset. And offset was the vertical distance at which the rips started and from the main arches. Okay. And then we only need to do this for the main arches because the ribs started right at the beginning of the middle arches as well. So is this offset, is this distance that we need to compute? And um, if you remember from the last video, what we did was we created a horizontal plane at that distance, we computed the intersection of that plane um, with the main arch, and then we found the parameters at, that, at, at, at those intersection points so that we could create subdivisions of the sub curve that starts in those offsets, and then join those with the subdivisions of the main arch. So we're going to follow a very similar process. So what I'm going to explain first is how to split the main arch, given the parameters. And then after that, we're going to find what are the parameter values that we actually need based on that intersection. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to, what I need to work with is with the main arch. And that was, we called it before, it was arch curve. And then what I need to do is here, I need to say, let's compute the, um, let's compute the sub curve for main arch. Okay. So what I'm going to say is here, if you go to, we were looking at this before on the, on the, um, on the, on the, on the stream. So the curve class in Rhino common has a method called split. And what split does is that it divides that curve at a specified parameter. And remember parameter is this value that goes from usually zero to some other number, which represents how far along in the curve we are. Um, but it's not Euclidean in a, in a, in a nurse kind of polynomial way. And then what this component was this method does is given a one single parameter, it returns an array of curves, which are divided from that one parameter. We have another version of this, of this, which is given a list of parameters. So given a list of different parameters, it returns the chopped curve, it returns an array of curves, chopping the original one in those parameter points. So I think this is a pretty good one that we're going to use. So what I'm going to say here is I'm going to create a list of doubles. Um, um, I'm going to call this uh, splitting parameters. And this is going to be equal to um, a new list of double objects. And to this, I'm going to add, for example, I'm going to add two dummy variables, I'm going to add, for example, the value of 0 0.2. And I'm going to add the value of, um, I believe the curve that we just generated goes from zero to two as a domain. So I'm going to divide it at 0 0.2 and at 1.25. Um, oh, and I forgot. Yes, sorry, I forgot to change. Um, and then so I was here, what I was saying is, I'm going to take this. Um, I'm going to, yes, so I'm going to I'm going to create a list called splitting parameters of doubles. And then I'm going to add two dummy values 0 0.2 and 1.25. Okay, and then I'm going to take the 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 base arch curve here. And I'm going to split it. I'm going to split it by using this list of parameter values that I just it's just a dummy one that I'm creating for the sake of explaining the concept. And if you remember, split returns an array of curves. So you can see here, um, splits 
is going to be this one. It's going to be the return of this function. And just for the sake of visualize, visualizing, I'm going to output this array of splits to the console output, the one that we're using just for debugging. I'm going to turn off the visualization of the main component, and you can see that we have one curve, okay? Uh, it looks like one curve, but actually internally is here. It's actually three curves that look so continuous because it just splits, right? And if I actually place here a domain component, we can see that for each one of those curves, the domain is zero, 2.2 because the original curve went from 0 to 2. So 0 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 1.5, it would probably be somewhere here, and then 1.5 to 2. So if I bake these curves, you can see now that I have this one here. You can see that I have this one here. You can see that I have the other one here. And you can see that I have the other extreme here. So these are the three curves that I have split. Okay. So this is great. And then what I want is, what I would like to do is, I would like to split the main arch into three curves, splitting it at some parameter here that is calculated based on that offset distance, and then only keep the one in the middle. Okay, so I can go back here. And then right now, what we are doing is we're just splitting the curve based on two random values that I just came up with. But if we want to make this well, according to the original design, what we need to do now is we need to calculate for a given offset, for a given vertical distance, what is the parameter of the curve at that vertical distance from the ground. And the way we're going to do that is by chopping the curve with a horizontal plane that is at that height. And then that intersection will give us the parameters at the curve that the intersection has been computed with. So let's try to do that. Hey, Sujai, thanks for the, thanks for the heads up because I, I saw you here from outside the classes. I was like, oh, the sketchbook. You're right. Thanks a lot for that call. Um, and remember that I think my audio is going to fail. So can you guys please do that also for the for the audio? Should I just change the battery? I'm just going to change the batteries right now because like, if the sketchbook is on, it's fine. But oh, June, <laughs> good to see you. Um, it's um, June, is, June is a student of mine from from the GSD. Um, um, he should actually share some of his work. He was at the computational design Final, uh, you should share some of the work with the with the, with the, with the group. Go into go into the Discord and share some of your work there. Introduce yourself. Okay, I'm just gonna change the batteries. Give me one second. Um, I also need to take a look at the. Wonderful. Um, fresh batteries. Yeah, because if it stops, uh, it's, it kind of sucks. All right. So let's let's remember. Let's remind Jose Luis of how to do curve in curve plane intersection. Uh, intersection curve plane. Intersection curve plane method right there. So here at the intersection class, we have a static method called curve plane, given the curve, given the plane, and the tolerance. And what does it return? It returns curve intersections, which is a class on its own. Um, let's take a look at that class. Class 
maintains an ordered list of curve intersection results. And this tells me how many intersections there were. And it's been a while since I've done intersections in natively. Gets the intersection event data at the given, and this, the intersection event data, is a, of the class intersection event. This is a little convoluted. Intersection event. Um, and then intersection event is provides all the information for a single curve intersection event. So probably here, the parameter on curve A where the intersection of curve. So this is probably what we want. We also could use the points. Um, um, so let me do a dry run of this because I haven't done this in a while. Let's see. So, so if I take mm -hmm, here, let's create a plane, test plane, new plane at, for example, uh, <clears throat> at, for example, new plane. Let's take, let's just do plain world x, y, and then test plane. Let's translate it a, a little bit up. Translate like, I don't know, like one unit in the z direction. So that's going to be that. And then we were here. So we were looking at curve intersections, right? So um intersections I, I think i need to bring this in right i think it's a different library so the intersection class belongs to the rhino geometry intersect namespace so that means that let's see if we have it rhino geometry we don't have it we have to add it here we have to say we're going to be using rhino geometry intersect and then here we have intersect dot curve in curve intersections intersect dot we have curve intersections we have plane circle plane sphere huh? This is odd. Geometry dot inter. Hmm. What am I missing here? Intersection class. Intersect intersection class. Yes. So that's what it is, right? Inter. Intersect. So that's the namespace intersection and then here we have curve plane exactly and the curve is going to be um, <clears throat> arch curve and then the plane is going to be test plane and then tolerance is going to be zero point something something small and then curve plane gives us back the where was it <clears throat> curve plane it gives us back the curve intersections, curve intersections, ints, intersections, and then from ints we can take the items, uh, mm -hmm. and we can say for for each, <clears throat> we can say for int i equals zero, i is less than ints number of elements. Then we can say here, we can say um, <clears throat> it's going to be curve intersections and the iterator gives us intersection event objects. So it gives us intersection event that's going to be int i and then for each one of these, we have the parameter a. So maybe what we want here is we want to take this and 
cancel this out. We want to cancel this out and then we want to say <clears throat> double T is going to be equal to parameter A and then splitting parameters at this thing. Uh, is this going to work? Yeah, that's an error. Translate takes three arguments. <laughs> no overload for translate. Really? In line 109? That's, that's strange. Translate. Ah, oh, because it has, it has to be a vector. Okay. New vector 3D00 zero, zero. Um, here. And then the name intersect does not exist in the current context. I, <clears throat> so maybe I don't have to bring it in like that. Now it's just available here and <clears throat> okay and then if we do this then we're gonna bake this and we can see that we have the two elements here and if I say distance from zero zero to this point the vertical distance DZ is one unit how cool is that um we got this um, yeah, intersections are not are a little convoluted in the Rhino common world, but um, it is what it is. It's actually quite, they're actually quite powerful, in fact. Um, so they're just like a little bit, a little hard to write, but um, okay. So where was I? <clears throat> I'm going to remove this. Oh, actually, let me let me copy this somewhere <laughs> because, uh, you know, I typically forget about these things. Let me just copy this here on a side note. Um, and then now we can actually go for it. OK, and then here you see Rhino geometry intersect. Okay, and what do I want here to have? This one here, and I want to have this one here, and then I want to have this one here, and then intersection events. Okay, so that's the sequence that I want to follow when explaining this. Okay. Okay, where was I here? When I stopped the video, I think I was here, right? Is there anybody still there? Hello. <laughs> okay, where are we? Okay. Chop, chop, chop. Mm, and I'm recording. Oof, that's good. Because last time I forgot and I felt terrible. Okay. <clears throat> As usual, before we do anything, we probably want to do some research and some documentation on how to do a plane and curve intersection. So I've done I've done my own research in parallel. And the way you research these things is very basic. You go to the Rhino Common API and you say, let me find an intersection between a curve and a plane. And literally the first thing that pops up is intersection curve plane. So we have that. And we can see that um, this is a static method, intersection between a curve plane, that belongs to a slightly different namespace than the one that we are used to. Uh, we usually just work with geometry objects that belong to rhino.geometry, but all the intersections belong to a particular namespace. So we will need to take a little bit of care about that. Um, but then we will need to reference that namespace in our component. But aside from that, everything else is going to be super straightforward. For example, we have curve, we have plane, and we have a tolerance for computing that um, intersection. And you can see that the result is not points or parameters, whatever. It's this thing called curve intersections. 
curve intersection and how this intersection has happened. So for example, a property is count, which is how many intersections did happen. And the other one is item. An item, it gives us access to each one of the intersection events. So each one of the, of the information of the buckets that contain information for each one of those intersections. Um, and what's interesting about item is that it's not something that we can say blah, 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 dot item. It doesn't work like that. Item is the representation in C sharp of something that you can access with the square bracket notation. So, so for example, curve intersections, square bracket zero, square bracket one, square bracket two, you will see that in a second. But let's take a look at actually what's inside these items. And these items are, are elements of the type intersection event. So which means that uh, the abstraction of all the information that happened for each one of the cuts is bundled inside another abstraction that is called intersection event. And if we now go to the intersection event class, we can see that finally, we have like granular access to all the information that is for each one of the intersections. So for example, whether if it's a point, whether if there's like some overlap information, the actual points for that intersection, and what's going to be most relevant for us, which is the parameters at the curve at which that intersection occurred. Okay. So you're going, you're going to see that you see that there's a lot of like classes and classes going down after we perform that intersection, but it's going to be very easy to unpack. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to go back to our C sharp script. And the first thing that I would like to notice is that here at the very top, if you, you probably have this on uh, um, um, collapsed. So if you expand this part here, you can see that this using statements are the way in C sharp to reference namespaces. So basically to say all the information, and all the goodness that is contained inside of rhino.geometry, can you make it available here in my code? Um, and these are the basic ones that we cannot change. So we always have access to these ones. But because we're going to be doing intersections, which are a different bucket that we check, we just say, like we just saw here, remember, this belongs to the namespace rhino.geometry.intersect. We could here in our main code, just access that functionality by saying rhino.geometry.intersect, you see, and you see this, um, you see here, this curly bracket notation, that means that it's a namespace. And as we say that, now you can see that we have access to intersection, which is where curve and plane exist. So this is would be the way to access the whole tree of dependencies of the namespace without having to reference the, the namespace. But writing this whole thing is like a little too much. So what I like doing usually is like referencing the namespaces that I'm going to be using in my code. So I'm going to be using here rhino geometry dot intersect. So I want everything that's in this namespace to be available for me. And now I can shorter all of this and just use this kind of um, this kind of accessibility. So what how are we going to do this now? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a base plane. We're going to create the cutting plane, the cutting plane has to be horizontal, it has to be, uh, it has to start whatever base point was so this point here, and it has to be above a certain z height, which I believe we named offset. So the way we're going to start this is going to say, um, splitting plane, we're going to, it's going to be a plane that is going to, that is going to start It's going to be horizontal. So it's going to start as world x y. Okay, then we're going to set the origin of this plane. For example, uh, we're going to say, we're going to set the origin to be uh, base point. Oh, okay. So the, the point that we had here at the input. And then on top of that, now what we're, we're going to do is we're going to move it up a little bit, we're going to say translate. And we can see from the overloads, we can see that the only overload that we have is a vector to translate this plane on. So we can say, well, um, we can say, uh, let me create a new vector 3d. 
which is going to be 0, 0, and z is going to be offset. And then move this plane by that offset vertically. If I run this code, everything works. There's no error, so it looks like we're good. Another way of doing this, perhaps a bit more elegant, could have been to just create the plane directly on the origin by saying, for example, actually, I'm going to go for that one because I like elegance. We're in writing code. Splitting plane is going to be equal to a new plane, and that is going to be defined by a lot of things. It's going to be defined by, it's going to be defined by, oh, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on, why I can't get, but you can define this based on the origin point and the two vectors. So let me do that. So what is the origin point going to be? It's going to be a new point 3D in space, which is going to be, the X coordinate is going to be the same as base plane, base point, x, the y coordinate is going to be the same as base point y, and then the c coordinate is going to be the same as base point z plus the offset, right? So that's the first parameter, and then the two, um, the two, the direction of the plane doesn't really matter because we just want it to be horizontal, but for the sake of making it nice, let's just maintain the x and y directions of the vector similar to the world ones. So for the x direction, we can say, let's just use the world. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my IDE. Let me just restart this and see. Uh, let's just, let's just say vector 3D dot um, x axis. That's going to be the, and then vector 3D here, the y axis is going to be equal to the world y axis. And as we do this, this is probably a bit more elegant. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with this. I like creating things right with the initial information as opposed to like creating a plane and moving it around, blah, blah, blah. That's like a little more computationally inefficient. So we have the splitting plane. This works and everything is back to normal. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to perform that intersection. Okay. So I'm going to say intersect which is the element that contains all the intersections. That's the namespace. I'm going to use the intersection class and I'm going to access all the static methods. So curve, line, curve, plane, whatever. So this is the one that I want. The one that takes a curve, a plane and a tolerance. So the curve is going to be base arch. So arch curve. Then the plane is going to be this splitting plane that I just created splitting plane and the tolerance is going to be some small value. So I'm not going to worry too much about this, just like 0 0.00 or something. What I need to keep in mind though, is that I need to store the results of this curve plane intersection as a variable. And that variable is going to be of the type curve intersection. Okay. So where is my, yes. So I'm going to say curve intersections, curve ints, is going to be equal to this. And I'm going to just do this so that it reads a little better. Okay. Um, this doesn't work. I wrote something incorrectly. Um, I think this is redundant. I think, yes, because intersection belongs to the intersect namespace is already available in my code. So I think that's how it works. And just for the sake of taking a look at this, I'm going to output this console curve intersections. Let's see how that looks like. Um, well, I'm not going to here. Yes. So they look like null, null. Oh, because it can't convert to a geometry object. So let me just do this. You see, we have two intersection events objects. Um, so here now, remember, the way this worked was intersection curve intersections gives us a curve intersections object that contains items which are of the type intersection event. So this is each one of the intersection. This encapsulates the information for each one of the intersections. So I'm going to try to access those with a for loop. So for int i equals zero, i is less than curve ints dot count and I plus plus, and then intersection event, I event is going to be equal to um, 
this and remember that I said that items are of the are have an are basically elements that you can access with square bracket notation. So you can see here how with an index I get access to all the intersection event objects which are contained inside of curve intersections. So here I'm going to do I and then for I it for this guy I can you can see that I can already access all that information overlaps points parameters so what I want is parameter a so this is where the plane cut the curve for this one particular intersection I'm going to name this T okay and then what I want is for all the intersections I want to take all the cuts and I want to um, I want to find those parameters and add them to the list so basically this list that I had here before that was a mock-up um, I'm going to put it here um, I'm going to and then once I compute each one of these guys I'm going to add that parameter to the list so that I keep an ordered list of all the parameters that I have found through those intersections is this working it looks like it's working um, and then now I can calculate these splits so can you tell me and let's uh, can you tell me let's just print this to the console as well print t dot to string just to make sure that we see things so let's print that I'm going to execute and you see that the cuts are at 0 0.1 something something and 1.89 something something this kind of looks symmetrical as numbers between 0 and 2 that makes me satisfied it looks like it's working well so I'm going to say now splits and then I'm going to cut the curve with these splitting parameters that contains all those parameters and then the middle the the sub curve sub curve is going to be if we are cutting with two a curve with two parameters we have three curves and I want to take the one at the center in the middle so that's going to be splits dot one let's let's pipe that out through the console and let's see we have this oh this is what I was baking before oh but it's nice you see how I split this horizontally so that's looking great and then um, so that's looking great. So compute the sub curve for main arch. So I think that's it, right, for this part. So I'm going to call this something else. I'm going to call uh, sub main arch. Okay. <coughs> um, and it's out just because I'm not showing it in the console now. Okay. So with this, I think we're ready now to um, to take to take both the sub curve that we just generated and the middle arch subdivide it into points and join those points with ribs. Okay, let's get to it. Cool. I need a, I need a bathroom break. I'll be right back. One minute, one minute.
Okay, I'm back. How is everybody doing? Um, is there is there anybody left? <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. Uh, I... Um. Mm -mm. Where was I? We were about to do the rips. Okay. Sounds good. So let's do that, no? Um, okay. Let's do the ribs. So we're going to do, now we're just going to take the curve. We're going to subdivide it in like the, 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 the amount of ribs. And then we're just going to join those two with lines and have them. That's going to be... That's going to be uh, that's going to be straightforward, I think. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? This thing is telling me that. Curve trim method. I I don't know. I, I I guess I didn't scroll down far enough. <laughs> Let's take a look at curve trim. Curve. So, okay. Where is curve? Rhino geometry curve. Trim removes portion of the curve outside the specified interval. Oh, so this is much better. <laughs> Yep, I guess we should have scrolled all the way past split. <laughs> yep, this looks, I mean, this one looks exactly like what we wanted. Um, trim portion of this curve is successful, null or failure. Um, okay, so maybe we can still add that to the stream. Um, so we could just do trim here, arch curve trim, and then use one or the other. We don't really need to do this whole thing. Um, hmm. That's a good call, Rodolfo. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can do like a small thing where I show same thing. Uh, okay, uh, maybe I can just do the same thing and just do like a quick, um, uh, okay, I'm just going to rewrite this. Okay, good call. Let's do that. <clears throat> but before we go any further, um, Somebody from the chat just reminded me of a method for trimming the curve that is actually much nicer than what we just implemented. So I guess we were when we were looking at the curve methods, we were not scrolling far enough. We just stop and split. But there's actually uh, a trim method that basically, given an interval or given two, par um, two parameters, just removes uh, everything that is outside of that interval of parameters from the curve which probably thinks makes things a bit easier just so because we now don't really have to we don't have to create a list of splitting parameters we don't have to cut the curve in a bunch of splits and then take the one that so this whole thing here could have been written a bit uh, more elegant if for example we just make if we just make we just compute the intersection okay and then we say, can I take the sub main arch is going to be this one, arch curve, okay? And then I'm going to trim this and I'm going to trim it with two values. But those two values, remember, are found inside of curve in. So we have to dig in a little bit here. So the first one is going to be curve ints, it's going to be the first intersection, okay? Um, which is going to be parameter A, 
and then here curve intersection is going to be one. Okay. Um, so I think this gives us the same result, except that there's an argument missing. Oh no. Oh yeah. This is, this should not be, there should be no comma there. Um, and, um, it gives us the same. Is that true? Let's say console dot sub main arch. Let's see if we get that output. Yes, it gives us the same. So you can see this is a little more elegant, uh, but I'm actually happy that we went through this because it also gave us the opportunity to explore a bit more in detail how interse curve intersections work and how to go in and in. This is more of like a shortcut to me. So uh, I'm just going to keep them both in the final final code. Uh, verbose way of doing it. And this is a little more elegant. Ah, is it more elegant? I don't know. It's definitely more concise. So that's for sure. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this is that we're not really checking for so if uh, let's say uh, I'm going, no, we're not really checking how many intersect if, are in the, if the intersection is successful, if curve ints count is different than two. So just do like an error um, component, um, add runtime message, grasshopper runtime message level dot error. error, something went wrong uh, with the intersection. Okay, and return. So stop whatever, stop running any more code. Something just didn't work. I mean, ideally, if everything in the previous code works well, if everything is tight, there should be no error with this, there should be no problem with this intersection. But just in case checking these things out is actually very good practice, uh, just for the sake of clarity. Okay, so where were we now what we're going to do is we're going to take the subdomain, the sub curve, and the main arch, we're going to divide it in equal amount of points. And we're going to join those points with uh, between with with lines, creating therefore creating the ribs. So, how are we going to do this? We're going to do some research as usual, and we're going to say, is there anything that given that can divide a curve in equal segments? And I think we've done this before in previous um, in previous um, in previous in previous um, um, videos or live streams or whatever. Uh, here in curve, we have divide by count, by count, which basically says, um, and we have this one, which is divide by count, how many segments do we want, whether if we want to include the ends, and it gives us also this additional nice output, which is the actual points. Okay. So I think we probably want to do that right now like this. So I'm going to say um, here, compute the sub arch for aim. All right. And now here we're going to create the ribs. The ribs are going to are going to be first of all, we have the base arch. Okay, so that's going to be um, arch curve, arch curve, and then it's going to be divide by count. And that's going to be a uh, number of ribs. And we want to include the ends. Yes, we want to, we do want to include the ends. But we also want to get these points out. Okay, so what that means is that I will have to output those points to some kind of array. So I'm going to call this arch curve points. And I will need to divide to define this beforehand. Um, arch curve points. And divide by count returns uh, a, an array of doubles, 
we could keep those, but we actually don't need them, I think, for anything. We are, what we actually want is the points. So we're just going to lose the return value that this function is giving us. Can we check if this go has worked? So let me see. I'm going to output through the console. I'm going to output. Oh, and we have a, a problem here. Um, cannot convert from out. Oh, OK. Yep. So I forgot. I declare this as one single point, but this has to be an array of points. OK. And then you can see here that we have all the points for the main arch. But I made, an, I made a mistake. It's not the main arch that I want to divide. It's the sub main arch. OK. So all these guys here. And now what I want to do is I want to say take the arch in the middle. Um, so what is uh, where is the arch in the middle? Uh, arch middle curve. OK, arch middle curve. And then divide by count as well. And but I also need to define something before that's going to be arch curve points, middle arch points. And this is what I want here. And I can output those here as well. What is the error? A variable middle arch points. Have I defined this before? Middle arch, for example, like, like that here. And then I have this. Oh, yeah, middle arch points are the, the base, like, yes. So I have these ones. And now, for example, just for the sake of it, this is not what we're going to do. Uh, list line ribs is going to be equal to a new list. <clears throat> and then for int i equals 0, i is less than uh, the number of points here. And then I plus plus, then just make uh, to ribs at a new line between between point I on this one and point I on the other list of points that we just created. Um, and let me see if this is working. Okay, so this is not working. There's some error it's type expected in 142. What is that? 142 is uh, I forgot to add this here. So line and then something is wrong. System array does not contain definition for count. Sorry, this is supposed to be length. You're right. Length and this as I run this now it's working and it looks like we have the ribs. So that's working great. Um, however, I don't really like we're not going to be able to this is not maintainable because remember, now this is just for half of one half of the first span. And what we need to do is we need to do this very, very programmatically. Um, because we need to take all the curves that we just generated before. Um, we need to take all the curves and all the spans that we have generated and we need to create this ribs for each one of those spans. So there's a couple ways to do that. So what we can do is like we can create a data tree where we go over all the arches that we have generated before. And then we divide by counts, we create those lines, we join them and then we um, and then we we push them to the final data tree. Or what we can do is just because all the spans are identical, it's a little cheaper to just go and say, let um, let's just calculate the ribs for the first for the first span. And then let's just clone, let's just copy all those ribs. Um, um, in the spanning direction. So I think that approach might be a little, a little less computationally expensive. So I think that's what we're going to do. So let's, let's go ahead and implement that.
Okay. Uh, the problem with that approach is that cloning one element, geometry element, is easy, but cloning a list of them and moving them is not so straightforward. So I may take my words back. Am I going to take my words back? Uh, am I going to take my words back? What are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Uh, how are we going to do this? You know what? You know, actually, what we're going to do? I'm going to stop here because I need to have lunch and I need to, to do something real. I, I need to run an errand. Um, but we're going to continue doing this because we still have to do the riffs and we still have to do the, um, the arch with the variable section. And that's going to take a little bit of coding as well. So, so I think I'm going to stop here and then what, just what we're going to do this afternoon is we're just going to continue. We're just going to continue with, um, with what we've been doing here. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I think we're going to stop here. Is that cool with everybody? <laughs> I will continue this. So there's another stream happening at 2, at two, uh, 2 p.m. my time. So 2 p.m. Boston time. So in, in one hour and 45 minutes, it's going to be here. So you can go to the Parametric Camp channel and... I think it should be the big first thing that shows up in the channel. Uh, is that so? So if I click here, is that what I get? Um, yes, so this one that is scheduled for 2 p.m. my time, that is going to happen in in one hour and 45 minutes. Uh, so just go here and we will continue. We will continue doing this exercise in the afternoon, okay? I'm a little tired, I need some some I need some food and some rest <laughs> and, and to run an errand. Okay, so I'll see you in one hour and 45 minutes. And then we'll just wrap this up uh, real quick. And then we'll do some Q&A and some social. Okay, how does that sound? <laughs> All right. See you in a bit. Thank you.